Hello everyone, welcome and thank you for choosing to watch this pre-recorded presentation of the Department of Navy's Pacific Coast Highway Commercial Outlease Initiative. Again, my name is Captain Jason Sherman. I'm the Installation Commanding Officer here at Naval Weapons Station Seal Beach. It's a very exciting uh, to be talking to you uh, about this potential opportunity. Several months ago, my project team planned to host an in-person industry forum here in Seal Beach. Interested parties were to walk our project site, which is about nine and a half acres, with a potential of up to 21 acres. COVID-19 prevented us from holding that kind of session, but it is not stopping us from further exploring this PCH opportunity through other means and methods. We consider this the kickoff for the market research phase of this commercial outlease project. We recently released a request for interest, or RFI, on July 1st, 2020, and this presentation is focused on offering additional information in support of the RFI. We're initiating this virtual information session with you now, so that over the next several months we can receive and process your input regarding the possibilities for this unique site. The Department of Navy needs to understand your goals, objectives, and constraints and we recognize you need to know our goals and requirements. We think there's potential for a win-win-win scenario at this site. I say win-win-win because the Navy's goal for this project is to first improve the quality of life for our sailors, secondly, while supporting a profitable and sustainable business opportunity for a developer, and third, potentially uh, a land use within the city of Seal Beach that contributes to the city's seaside community character. If you already know our community, have read through our RFI announcement, or have driven past the PCH site, you're aware the PCH site is accessible, relatively undeveloped, and within a beautiful beach community. Naval Weapon Station Seal Beach is a specialized Navy installation with a relatively small active duty military presence. Because of our small active duty size, we do not have many of the services and amenities found on larger installations. We therefore seek to enhance the quality of life and welfare and recreation opportunities our sailors and their families deserve. So, we would be especially interested in facilities and operations that support quality of life improvements for our sailors and civilians that work on board the installation. Just to give you a few examples, the weapon station has no on-base dining facilities or child care centers and no larger entertainment outlets such as movie theaters or bowling alleys. Our installation also lacks on-base lodging. Limited stay lodging would potentially be used for drill units from the Navy and Marine Corps reserves. Of course, these types of establishments would also be of interest to many of our community neighbors. These land uses are mentioned to help you better understand the Navy's goals, but the Navy is not tied to any concepts. We want to hear from industry what opportunities appear possible. We ask you for your vision for this site. How we can help you achieve that vision. Not everything is possible, but we're open to listening to the art of the possible. We seek your unfiltered ideas. We will be take, talking about next steps for this initiative later on in the presentation. Thank you again for your interest in this Navy Commercial Outlease Initiative. I look forward to seeing where this process takes us in the coming years. Hi, my name is Greg Smith and I'm the base public affairs officer and today I'm going to be giving you some background information about Naval Weapon Station Seal Beach. The primary purpose of the base is to provide ordnance logistics services to the United States Pacific Fleet and we do this in three primary ways. First, we provide storage of United States Navy and U.S. Marine Corps munitions. Uh, which we also call ordnance. And uh, these ordnance items can be anything from cruise missiles to torpedoes to uh, howitzer rounds to even the 9mm rounds that uh, the uh, sailors carry when they're doing sentry patrol. Second, we also load and unload these munitions onto both Navy and Coast Guard vessels. And then finally, we also do maintenance work on uh, some types of Navy weapons systems. 
Here's an example of a typical day at uh, the Naval Weapons Station Seal Beach Wharf. In this image you can see a guided missile destroyer that's being loaded with vertical launch missile canisters. A little bit more base background. The base dates back to World War II. Uh, first became operational in March of 1944. So we've been in business for over 75 years now. Uh, our base is one of national strategic importance. It's uh, the only base within 1,000 miles of the fleet concentration in San Diego, and we service a majority of the Pacific Fleet from this base here. Also, one other thing that's unique to the base is we are the only military installation in the United States with a National Wildlife Refuge enclosed completely within its boundaries. Here are some additional base statistics for you. We have a little over 5,000 acres of land area, and that includes the National Wildlife Refuge, which is a little less than 1,000 of those. We service about 40 Navy and Coast Guard vessels annually, and that number is expected to rise to more than 50 vessels annually in the coming years. Our local economic impact, based on FY 2017 dollars, is about $168 million. As far as personnel numbers go, on a non-COVID day, you would expect to see about 520 civilians and about 215 uniformed military personnel aboard the installation. Those numbers are expected to rise a little bit in the coming years, uh, probably adding about 50 additional personnel. We have 186 family housing units on board the base, and those service not only our sailors and Marines, but also military personnel from surrounding military bases that don't have any housing facilities. We have a total of about 320 military family members uh, living in that housing unit. Finally, we're home to several Navy and Marine Corps tenant commands uh, and their reserve units. And uh, so during the weekends, you could have up to 850 uh, military reservists on board the installation. And that number is expected to rise as well, uh, perhaps to as many as uh, 1,150 uh, Navy and Marine Corps Reserve personnel in the coming years. So here we have a map of the base. Uh, as you can see, we're bordered by Interstate 405 to the north, and the Pacific Ocean and Editor Avenue to the south, and uh, Seal Beach Boulevard to the west, and Bolsa Chica Avenue to the east and uh, the base is uh, intersected by two streets that go right through the base, that's Westminster Avenue as well as Pacific Coast Highway. So the installation is broken down into several different areas. First is our what we call our ordnance area. It's where we do storage and maintenance of munitions uh, and also loading of munitions. So the primarily the northern and eastern sections of the base is where that takes place as well as our wharf area which is in the uh, southwestern portion of the base. And these uh, areas are off limits to uh, even most base personnel whenever there are munitions present. Uh, this is our administrative area as you can see it's primarily along the western edge of the base and uh, the southwestern portion of that is where the uh, two parcels are that we are looking to potentially outlease. And you'll hear more details about those parcels in uh, coming presentations. And finally, the Seal Beach National Wildlife Refuge uh, occupies the south central portion of the installation. We currently have several major uh, long-term projects, construction projects that are underway. And uh, these include some munition storage bunkers that are being built uh, on the north uh, section of the base. Uh, and on our administrative area, we currently have a Navy, a, excuse me, a Marine Corps Reserve Center uh, being built. Uh, that's part of the reason why you'll see, uh, uh, hopefully, a, an increased number of reserve personnel on board the base once that uh, structure is completed. And then finally, and most importantly for our discussion here today, uh, we have a major project underway to build a new ammunition wharf and to reconfigure Anaheim Bay. And I'll go into a little bit more detail on that now. Here's an image, it's an aerial view of Anaheim Bay. 
uh, prior to construction start. And uh, as you can see, uh, our ammunition wharf here is uh, outlined in yellow. And the proposed outlease parcels are off the map uh, just to the north of where the uh, munitions wharf is located. And here's a simulated view of the finished uh, project. As you can see, it's a, it's a pretty radical transformation of the harbor area. And you'll also notice that our ammunition loading has been moved more towards the center of Anaheim Bay, uh, further from both uh, Pacific Coast Highway and our administrative areas. Uh, this will increase both safety and security and hopefully allow for uh, the second parcel that we call Site 2 to be opened up for outleasing at a later date. So this concludes uh, the background briefing on the base. If you have any questions, uh, please contact your outlease points of contact and uh, that information will be provided later on in the presentation. Thank you. Good afternoon, my name is Jeff McGovern. I'm the Installation Environmental Director. I'm here to discuss some of the environmental background for the potential outlease at the Naval Weapons Station Seal Beach. Next we'll be talking about the environmental overview. There are currently no environmental constraints at this site. It's basically a flat grassland area. There is no wetlands or retention basins on site. At that location there's also no endangered species or uh, sensitive state sensitive species as well. There are currently no known faults directly below the site, and there are no archaeological sites that we know of. The area is primarily fill. It was formerly a wetland many, many years ago. And currently on site, there's one operational facility, and adjoining it is a one adjacent current active operational facility. The site operations out there is pretty much a training and weight testing pad. It is a large concrete pad, but of no storage of hazardous materials or hazardous waste. The one maintenance building adjacent on the north perimeter of the proposed site does primarily painting and sandblasting at that location. All the equipment at that building is permitted by the AQMD, and there are several unoccupied storage buildings adjacent to the northeast section. There is no storage of hazardous materials or hazardous waste in those locations as well. Industrial operations can be restrictive because of the neighboring McCosk Elementary School, which can be considered a sensitive receptor for regulatory purposes. We'll be going through the picture slides next. The current picture on slide four, there are pictures of the western portion of the property. The left picture of it is the elementary school in the background. The right picture is looking south along the western perimeter fence adjacent to Seal Beach Boulevard. The next set of pictures are the western, also western portion of the property. The left picture is a concrete pad, which is currently used for the training and weight sessions, testing sessions. And the right picture is west towards, looking towards the weight pad. The next picture is the northern sections. These are pictures of the northern portion of the property. The left picture is looking towards PCH from Bowie Road, which is adjacent to the northmost perimeter section. The right picture is looking north with one of the unoccupied storage buildings that are adjacent to the northeastern portion of the site. And that building is off site from what the uh, subject property is. The next sections are the eastern section. There are pictures of the eastern section of the property. The left picture is looking east along Perimeter Road, parallel to PCH. The right picture is looking north towards the maintenance building, which is a, the adjacent building active off the property, in, in a proposed property. Past uses. The proposed site has been used since the late 20s, with the Navy's acquisition of the property in the late 1940s. Much of the site lacked infrastructure, but rather as a holding yard based on historical pictures with op industrial operations limited to the northern and eastern sections. Our historical picture is the western portion of the property. The left picture is looking west towards the city of Seal Beach on PCH and Seal Beach Boulevard where buoys are shown along the perimeter fencing. The right picture is looking north along Seal Beach Boulevard with stack buoys as visible inside the perimeter fences. And that was the primary section of that area was used for storage of the buoys throughout the Navy's early uh, 40s, 50s, and through the 80s. Looking at installation site, installation restoration sites, which are also commonly known as cleanup sites, there are two installation sites on the, in this particular property. 
one section, Site 9, is on the eastern section of the site and was a former disposal pit for blast media. Waste was determined to be non-hazardous in 1982 and a closure report was approved by the DTSC in 1998. Site 19 is adjacent to the northern section of the site. It was a former disposal pit for, for paints, solvents, and oils. All hazardous materials were excavated in 1998 and a closure report was approved by DTSC in 1999. And that is again, that's parallel next to the active maintenance building, but it's off-site from the subject property. Only site nine is within the boundaries of the, of the site. Hazardous materials. There are no records of any petroleum or chemical releases at the site, and there are currently no storage of any hazardous materials or any records of underground storage tanks. The construction of past structures on or adjacent to the site likely contain asbestos or lead-based paints, with the possibility of some soils being contaminated by those remnants. Natural and cultural resources. The grassland site is, is ideal habitat for many bird species and one of the last remaining habitats for the San Diego black-tailed jackrabbit, a state, a state species of concern. There are no known Native American archaeological sites through this development, but consultation is requested with the State Historical Preservation Officer and that includes notifying the local neighboring American, Native American tribes. It is expected that both the federal government and the prospective leasees will comply with NEPA and CEQA requirements respectively. Upon completion of the CEQA report, the prospective leasee will provide the documents to the federal government upon review and we will issue a signed categorical exclusion, a CADEX, and that the project can proceed. This concludes the base background briefing. Questions should be directed to the Navy's Environmental Office or to the environmental director of myself, Jeff McGovern. Thank you very much. Hello, my name is Jeff Burke. I'm a facilities planner at NAVAC Southwest. I'm also the project manager for this commercial outlease initiative. In this segment, I'll discuss the status of the facilities at the PCH site. There's a key point our team would like to remind everyone about. The PCH site is technically comprised of two adjacent sites. Site 1 borders Seal Beach Boulevard, and it's over nine acres in size. It's ready today to be advertised to developers as a leasing opportunity. Site 2 runs along the Pacific Coast Highway, and it's larger, over 12 acres. The Navy's considering adding the Site 2 parcel to the PCH project, but this wouldn't occur until the latter half of calendar year 2024 as Site 2 is needed by the Department of the Navy until then. As noted in the PCH request for interest, the Navy is investigating several courses of action under this initiative. Options include the no-action alternative, initiating the commercial outlease of Site 1, bundling Site 1 with Site 2 under one outlease, and other alternatives that may be identified by interested parties over the next few months. You may have noted in our RFI we discussed how the material handling equipment certification and training functions, or the crane and forklift operations, are still needed at the installation. They're planned to be relocated to an area within the main installation. The Navy may move these functions before the commercial outlease is awarded, or may work with the prospective Site 1 lessee to move these functions during the period of performance of the lease. Our real estate team is planning to explain later on in this presentation how in-kind consideration and other types of consideration may be used under a lease. As Jeff McGovern mentions in the environmental segment of this presentation, Site 1 is relatively free of constraints to redevelopment. Due to the limited past and current land uses, there are just a few facility types on the property to discuss. They are the concrete training pad, the applied instruction building on the pad, the installation perimeter fencing, and active and abandoned utilities and roads. The concrete training pad is about 58,000 square feet. The pad footprint is about 380 feet by 153 feet, and the depth of the pad varies from 12 inches to 18 inches. This slab may have been constructed in the 1966 timeframe. The Applied Instruction Building is a pre-engineered, metal-paneled, relocatable structure. It sits on the corner of the training pad to provide classroom space for the materials handling personnel, the crane and forklift operators, and motorcyclists who use the pad as a safety course. This building's about 48 feet by 20 feet, providing a 960 square foot basic classroom. The classroom does not have restrooms or a kitchenette. It was built in 1973 and it's in fair condition. This photo is included as a reminder that installation perimeter fencing will need to be relocated under the commercial outlease. The commercial outlease site can certainly be open to the public, 
but a new perimeter fence line will need to be created on the north and east side of the outlease site or sites. The new fence line will also need to meet all Department of the Navy security requirements. These requirements will be provided to the prospective lessees as part of a potential deal structure under the outlease. This ornamental fencing is located north of the installation main gate. This is just to show you generally what the new fence line separating the PCH site from the installation might look like in the future. There are a few utility systems on Site 1 and Site 2. There are several underground potable water lines and irrigation lines, overhead electrical lines terminating on the site, storm sewer lines, and some abandoned utility lines from past uses. Some of the roads are paved asphalt and still in use. Others are legacy gravel roads. An important issue regarding utilities is that the Department of the Navy does not intend to be the utility provider for the lessee. We envision the lessee procuring utilities for the lease premises as part of the project. The intent is for the de developer to be responsible for all utilities infrastructure, from installation to operations and maintenance. This storm sewer drawing represents some of the record drawings and other documentation we have on the project site. We'll be providing these to interested parties at the appropriate time during the solicitation process. The exact properties of all facilities on Site 1 and Site 2 will need to be field verified by the prospective lessee. This photo shows an active bus stop on the left side of the photo on Seal Beach Boulevard and the existing installation perimeter fencing running outside of Site 1 on Seal Beach Boulevard and outside of Site 2 adjacent to the Pacific Coast Highway. That's the end of the facilities condition segment. Thank you for listening. We look forward to receiving your input into the process and your questions and concepts. Hi, I'm Les Johnson. I'm the Community Development Director for the City of Seal Beach. Seal Beach is a picturesque, quaint uh, beach community uh, located between the cities of Long Beach and Huntington Beach. The population of about 25,000. Uh, we have a population that's quite diverse with about 9,000 uh, seniors. Uh, we have a number of families as well as uh, younger uh, up-and-coming uh, singles and whatnot that are looking for a quality environment to live in. Uh, the City of Seal Beach has had a, an outstanding relationship with the Navy for a number of decades uh, and we enjoy uh, the relationship we have and we are looking forward to extending that invitation through the opportunity of development that's, uh, that is uh, currently being afforded. So we look forward to seeing a development that not only is great benefit to the Navy and Navy personnel but is also uh, a wonderful asset and resource to our residents in the region alike. So we look forward to seeing just a quality development that brings a variety of opportunities to our community that's iconic uh, and fits very well within our community. Hello, my name is Jennifer Toops and I'm a Senior Realty Specialist at Naval Facilities Engineering Command Southwest and today I'll be taking you through the Navy's Request for Interest process. Real Estate's portion of the presentation will address project specifics to include the Navy's Leasing Authority, successful leases with in-kind consideration between the Navy and private entities, we'll venture into the locations of the sites, and we'll discuss how industry outreach plays a major role in overall project development. We'll go over the highlights of the request for interest that the Navy's posted on beta.sam and we'll walk through the project timeline and next steps after this industry forum video presentation. And lastly, we'll discuss how to submit a response to the Navy's request for interest, also known as the RFI. The Navy's authority to outlease is found in Title 10 USC 2667. The term outlease is a Department of the Navy term, meaning the leasing of Navy owned property. The Department of the Navy currently envisions engaging with the lessee via a ground lease when the lessee manages the property and provides in-kind consideration in lieu of cash rent. Even though the leasing authority provides for a lease back, for this opportunity, the Navy does not intend to lease back the land or improvements from the lessee. 10 USC 2667 allows for the payment of in-kind consideration by the lessee as in-kind consideration projects, often referred to as long-term maintenance projects. 
The definition of in-kind consideration projects under 10 U.S.C. 2667 include protection, alteration, repair, improvement or restoration of the property or facilities, and the construction of new facilities. The amount of in-kind consideration cannot be less than the fair market value of the lease, and the Navy will use an appraisal to determine the fair market value of the lease by following certain appraisal guidelines found in the Uniform Appraisal Standards for Federal Land Acquisition, also known as the Yellow Book, and Uniform Standards of Professional Appraisal Practice. The Navy implores industry to review the Navy's leasing authority, 10 U.S.C. 2667, and other real estate authorities that set the platform for what we're able to do when it comes to projects like this. The Navy has executed successful leases with private entities that yield tremendous value each year, generating in-kind consideration projects for the Navy. Some examples of these types of leases include the Montalua Shopping Center in Hawaii, the Navy received a 55,000 square foot admin building as in-kind consideration. The Globus America lease at Naval Base Ventura County. In-kind consideration has provided for the repair of large infrastructure projects on the installation. And the NASCO lease at Naval Base San Diego has also provided in-kind consideration projects such as air duct replacement and parking lot pavement improvements on the installation. In-kind consideration has allowed the Navy to make quality of life improvements to the installations that the Navy otherwise wouldn't have the funding for. These leasing scenarios have been successful and that's currently what the Navy envisions conceptually for this project, but we're looking to industry for expertise and insight. As you can see, the Navy receives substantial value from projects like this. So we'd like to take a moment to stress that we're dedicated to pursuing these initiatives with momentum and innovation. So please keep that in mind as I go over the project timeline and the next steps at the end of this presentation. The locations of sites one and two present an amazing opportunity from commercial development. The sites are walking distance to the ocean and located about eight miles from downtown Long Beach and about 30 miles from downtown Los Angeles. There are ample amounts of transportation options from the sites, including MTS bus routes and the Pacific Surfliner train that services the neighboring counties. The sites are in close proximity to major airports, such as LAX Airport, John Wayne Airport, and Hollywood Burbank Airport. Major nearby attractions include the Aquarium of the Pacific, Knott's Berry Farm, Disneyland, and Disney's California Adventure theme parks, to name a few. The Request for Interest is a market research tool issued to determine the availability and adequacy of potential business sources for the Department of the Navy's information and planning purposes. This is not a request for proposal or a promise to issue another solicitation type in the future. However, the amount of participation and feedback that the Navy receives from industry could lead to a request for proposals in the future. The Navy is seeking creative, achievable quality of life enhancing solutions and is looking to industry to provide visions for redevelopment of the sites. The success and future viability of a lease is dependent on the amount of participation and feedback that the Navy receives from industry's response submissions to the request for interest. We want to hear from you throughout this process and given the environment that we're in, we're currently offering industry the opportunity to submit questions based on information in the RFI before the October due date, which I'll outline in the next few slides. In the past, this has been a great way to obtain additional information from industry as we shape the overall concept. The request for interest process serves to gauge industry interest and market input. The Navy's concepts allow for the commercial use of underutilized federal property in order for new functions on the sites to create quality of life enhancements for the Naval Weapons Station SEAL Beach personnel, their dependents, and the local community. The Navy has posted a request for interest on beta.sam and is currently seeking information on how an interested party could use or redevelop a 9.2 acre site known as Site 1 with the future potential redevelopment of an adjoining 12.3 acre site known as Site 2. Some highlights of the request for interest include the real estate authorities, Department of the Navy requirements, the request for interest including the attachments, attachment A, which is a site profile report, 
and attachment B, which contains the Navy's requirements and the response content. As you can see, the RFI is a comprehensive document that outlines the Navy's intent during this market research phase, what we're looking for from commercial industry, and critical milestones as we progress. And as I mentioned earlier, as part of industry outreach, the Navy's offering industry a chance to submit written questions regarding content in the request for interest as outlined in section 3B of the RFI on beta.sam. Questions from industry are due no later than September 9th, 2020. The Navy will then post the questions and answers to beta.sam on Wednesday, September 30th, 2020. The questions from commercial industry and subsequent RFI responses lend tremendous value to the Navy's process, so we encourage you to put forth any questions you may have before the September 9th due date. The requests for interest submissions are due no later than 4 o'clock p.m. Pacific Daylight Time on Tuesday, October 27th, 2020. The Navy will then analyze the responses to determine the next course of action. And if the Navy elects to move forward with a request for proposal, it will entail the Navy moving forward with the environmental analysis, completing legal descriptions and appraisal and obtaining the required approvals. So the anticipated time frame for posting a request for proposal could be in the summer of 2022. The Navy will continue to post updates to beta.sam, so it's important to check the website and stay informed. You can also monitor the Naval Weapons Station Seal Beach website at the link provided on the slide. Interested parties are required to submit four hard copies of their response content found in attachment B of the request for interest to the address provided on the slide. In addition to the four hard copies, responders may also submit their responses via email to the email address provided on the slide, or you can mail a DVD or CD accompanied with the hard copy submissions. Please do not send flash drives. You may email us directly to be added to our interested parties list to receive email updates and reminders of upcoming project milestones throughout the process. And as a last reminder, the request for interest response submissions are due no later than 4 o'clock p.m. on Tuesday, October 27, 2020. Thank you for watching our industry forum video presentation. We look forward to hearing from you.